hello guys uh, today i want to touch on uh, ionic bonding which is another type of bonding uh, your syllabus require you to deal with three types of bondings which is uh, ionic bonding covalent bonding and metallic bonding but this video in this video we will be focusing on uh, ionic bonding so Ionic bonding, it is simply the bonding between metals and nonmetals. It's the bonding between metals and nonmetals. And this bonding, it takes place through the transfer. It is through the transfer. It's through the transfer of electrons from uh, uh, metals to nonmetals. It is uh, when metals uh, lose their valency electrons to form a positively charged ion. Uh, and the nonmetals gain the, the electrons which have been lost by the metals to form a negatively charged ion. So, we are going to show that uh, with the demonstration of the formation of uh, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, it is a table salt, the table salt that we use at home. So, we have a metal, uh, our sodium metal structure and our chloride and our chlorine atomic structure. So, one thing that you have to know is that metals, they have a valency, valency electrons of less than four. So, all the, uh, all the, all the atomic structures of certain atoms which have valency electrons of less than four they belong to the metals and those that have a valency electrons of more than four they belong to non-metals so one of the reasons why bonding takes place it is for an atom to obtain what you call an octet configuration an octet configuration it is when the valency shell it is completely filled or it is when a valency shell it has eight electrons so here under ionic bonding the sodium will lose its valency electron we show the movement of electron by an arrow it will lose its valency electron so sodium has the electronic configuration if we are to write the electronic configuration of sodium it is a two comma eight one so this is the electronic configuration of sodium. So this means that when in the last shell of sodium, sodium has one valency electron. So it will lose that valency electron to chlorine. Chlorine which have uh, the electronic configuration of 2,87. So here we can see that Chlorine, sodium has lost its valency electron to form so that it remains with a valency shell of eight electrons. So it has lost this electron. It has lost this electron here to, to chlorine, which have valency electrons of eight. So to form a, an electronic configuration here of sodium now is going to be 2,8. Now we can see that the valency shell of sodium has 8 electrons, which means that it has obtained its octet configuration. Now for chlorine, we see that the electronic configuration of chlorine now is going to be 2,88. Eight. Why? Because uh, the electron that was lost by sodium, it has now been gained by chlorine. And because we mentioned in the, in the above statement that metals lose valency electrons to form a positive charge. So that's why sodium, after sodium has lost its valency electron, it forms a positive one charge. And the nonmetals gain electrons to form a negative charge. And this is why we have a negative one charge here for chlorine. This is simply uh, because for you to get this, to remember this, know that what, the number of electrons that uh, sodium, that metals lose, it is equal to the charge that it will have. So metals lose to form a positive charge. So the value of the positive charge depend on how many electrons has that metal lost. 
while for non metals they have a negative charge and that the value for that negative for that negative charge depend upon how many electrons has that non metal gained in order to obtain an octet configuration that's an example for sodium now let us look at an example for aluminium oxide aluminium oxide has a, a formula for al2o3 now here we have um, the structure of aluminium so the formula al2 it shows us how many aluminiums are there and the o3 shows us how many oxygens are there so in the in the compound aluminum oxide, we have uh, two aluminiums which will be bonding with the uh, three oxygens. This is because uh, aluminum has valency electrons of three. You can see that in the last shell of aluminum, I have uh, drawn uh, three electrons, and then um, oxygen has valency electrons of uh, six. That means for oxygen to obtain octet configuration, because it's a non-metal, it will have to gain two electrons. So each oxygen will gain two electrons. So for sodium to obtain its octet configuration, it has it have to lose three electrons. That means so each al aluminum here will lose uh, three electrons. Now, this is what is going to happen. This electron here is going to be lost to this oxygen and uh, this one here is going to be lost to this oxygen. Now this means that, that, that uh, the, this oxygen now it has received two electrons. That means it has it is have it have an an octet configuration and this aluminum here it has lost two electrons that means it is going to remain with one so it will lose this one electron to this other oxygen and this aluminum the second aluminum will lose its one to the same oxygen making sure that this oxygen has a complete valency shell and this the second aluminum is going to remain with the two and this two is going to be lost uh, to this oxygen and uh, therefore that's now therefore we have uh, our atoms having octet configurations our oxygens they have eight electrons in the outer shell our aluminiums have lost three electrons to have uh, eight electrons in the outer shell and this is how this is what we have here Aluminum lost uh, three electrons, to remaining with these eight electrons from uh, the, the second shell, making our charge to be plus three. Why plus three? Because aluminum has lost three electrons. And oxygen, it has gained the two electrons from each aluminum, so making oxygen to have a two minus charge. A two minus charge. So, from our demonstration here, we see that we have uh, two aluminium. So you have to show that by writing a big two by aluminium, and we have three oxygen, you show that by writing a big three. So this tells you that two aluminiums and three oxygens uh, giving us uh, aluminium oxide. So that's the formation of aluminium oxide. So one other thing to remember is that uh, the the structure for ionic bonding they form what to call the lattice structure. So all these are the sodium chloride, the aluminium oxide, the magnesium fluoride, the magnesium chloride, calcium oxide. The structure that they form is the lattice structure. A lattice structure is a very strong structure. Therefore, that's why the, the ionic compounds are said to be strong, is because of the strong lattice structure. So this is a typical example of a lattice structure. A lattice structure that has a Charges. This we say it is a positive charge, it is a negative charge, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. This is negative here, and this is positive there. 
and this is negative there and this is positive there and this is negative there this is positive there and this is negative there this is negative there this is positive negative positive and negative so that's the lattice structure you can see that the the negative is uh, attached to the positive the positive to the negative negative to the positive positive negative that's how it is therefore it forms a, a strong structure a strong force of attraction